Joe Dresper. Hi, Michelle. Hi, thanks for coming to join us today at CUFS. It's a pleasure to have you. My pleasure to be here. Um, you're a writing creator of film um, of East Asian cinema, but you specifically look at Japanese cinema. Can you tell me why you love it so much and what's so special about that cinema? Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I don't know what it is specifically about Japanese cinema that's different from other Asian cinemas um, that appeals to me, I guess. Uh, but I, uh, maybe it's when I, I moved to Japan and sort of was writing about Japanese cinema and, and uh, it was slightly eccentric. I mean, you, kn you never knew quite what you're going to get with Japanese cinema, but you know it's going to be something different that you haven't seen before, usually most of the time. Um, but what I found is when I moved to Japan and started writing about Japanese cinema properly, the, the people involved in the industry uh, were like very friendly and there's a very dynamic scene, especially in the indie filmmaking community. And yeah, there's a really active film culture there. There's a lot of stuff coming out. So even if most of it is rubbish, you, there's always going to be some really good stuff there to, to pick out. Yeah. Um, you created with Tom Mez, uh, the Midnight Eye, uh, dot com, and uh, that's like the leading website in Japanese cinema. Uh, did you know when you created it how successful it was going to be? Not at all. Uh, we knew we were going to be the first. Um, you know, we, we started thinking about it in 1999 to or 2000, I think it was when I first met Tom. And both of us were really interested in Japanese film. Both, both of us were aware that there wasn't anything really being written on contemporary Japanese film. Um, I mean, Mark Schilling's books were the obvious example. But um, yeah, I mean, what we wanted to do was just to go out and meet the film directors that come to film festivals, interview them and uh, sort of get them to talk about their work in their own words. And um, I, I knew there was going to be an interest, but I didn't realise that uh, it was going to sort of explode to quite the sort of degree it has. I mean, like at that time, there's only like about three or four Japanese films would come out uh, in London every year. And now it's a lot easier to see Japanese films, definitely. Um, your, ne your next project, which is coming up at the end of November, um, is a Zipangu Fest. Zipangu Fest, yes. yes. Um, <laughs> what is different from this festival than the other UK-based film festivals of East Asian cinema? Well, Japanese? we're we're specifically Japanese, so we're the, the very first one that's specifically uh, Japanese. Um, I wanted to really mix up the sort of stuff. I mean, the very name Zipangu comes from like Marco Polo's original name for Japan when he went to China in the 13th century. And what we're trying to do is, um, you know, for most people never go to Japan, so they've got this image of what it's like. And, and that title Zipang always sort of sort of highlights that the, a lot of people have an image but don't see the reality. And what we're trying to do is present a whole series of more complicated images to show that the reality is not quite as simple as one might think. Uh, so what we're doing is not just showing new films, we're just showing stuff from every single genre really. Um, and also sort of the older films that uh, probably wouldn't fit into fest other retrospectives or um, BFI seasons or whatever, just to show good films that I really like. And uh, that's the key thing. The, like for example, The Children of the Beehive that we're showing up with Leeds Film Festival is a film that hasn't been shown in the UK before and it probably wouldn't fit into another season that we could afford to do, but um, just showing it as a one-off for something representative from that era um, is a great way of sort of introducing it to the public. And also key to what's different about the festival is the way we're sort of structuring it so it's not just one event going on in one place. I mean, obviously there's going to be the main weekend going on uh, in the Genesis Cinema in, in Brick Lane or Mile End. But around that, we're getting lots of little events going on and doing stuff dotted around the country that sort of everything feeds into the, uh, the festival. So, I mean, definitely trying to reach out to a wider audience. Um, you obviously created like many of the fest film festivals and events. Uh, what is the process that you go through in choosing them, like the particular films? Uh, it depends. I mean, I've done a lot of, after I did Behind the Pink Curtain, I did a couple of seasons, uh, pink films only, but I mean, pretty much I knew the sort of stuff I wanted to show and what was available then. Uh, really what happens at the beginning of the year, uh, various, there's usually various buzzes about certain titles that maybe came out in Tokyo Film X or Tokyo Film Festival. Um, so I try and get hold of screeners from them, sort of track down the sales agent, uh, ask for DVDs. 
Um, and then sort of have this ongoing process throughout the year and then other things might get recommended to me. And um, I try to get out to Japan at least once a year. Uh, and so there's, I have to watch quite a lot of stuff to make sure there's stuff that really stands out that I like. Um, this year, for example, I went to Yubari Film Festival, which is in Hokkaido, sort of, uh, which is quite a big one for Jishuega independent film. And I was lucky there was three, three of us uh, guests there from various international festivals that sort of, um, we obviously stood out being non-Japanese, so suddenly all these sort of young filmmakers came rushing forward going, here's here, have my film, just watch it. I want it screened overseas. So it's sort of got to the stage now that I've been around long enough where I can sort of don't have to try too hard. Yeah. 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 Um, so I've noticed that you're launching New Fest with um, a Halloween double bill on the 29th of October, uh, the Big Tit Zombie and Rover Geisha. Um, what is the style? Why did you choose that style of film? Like, what would you say it represents a part of Japan? Uh, well, there was various reasons why those got ended up the final selection behind the scenes, which, but I wanted to show a 3D film and uh, I also sort of wanted to show a film with tits, I've got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, to be, no, I think really to be blunt is that to do a festival, you have to think about, you know, for all the noble intentions you have about showing quality films, you, you have to get people through the door and uh, doing a sort of launching with a high impact sort of uh, double bill like that, you're going to get the, the attention and people are going to come and once they're there, you've got a captive audience, they might go and see the other films and, and that's really what I want to do is like open it out and that's why we're doing it in the Barbican, not the Genesis, you know, because the Barbican's got a whole different audience from a lot of the other cinemas in London. So, yeah, and we've got a few sort of films which are calculated to sort of shock and pull people in and then that's sort of balanced with more sort of uh, other types of films, so. Um, today, uh, part of the, the mini events you were talking about earlier with uh, the Fangu Fest, you screened uh, An Yong Kim Yi. An Yong Kim Chi, yeah. That's it, sorry about my poor pronunciation. <laughs> um, why did you choose uh, in particular, because you talk about the genre as well, uh, why, what is, why did you choose to show that? What was so important? Well, I was talking about Jishu Ega, which is the real self-produced, sort of do-it-yourself filmmaking scene, which is very active in Japan. And um, there's countless number of these films made by sort of, you know, just people who want to make a film, go out and make films about themselves. And, uh, and these show at various festivals. There are lots of festivals dedicated to this, or they'll just go and show it at their town hall or, or lots of cafe bars in Tokyo. And so it's a really sort of vibrant subculture of, of Japanese film. And there's lots of interesting stuff coming out of it. And quite a lot of directors make the leap to go and do other stuff as well. Um, so that particular film was, firstly, uh, Tetsuaki Matsue, the director, is one of the most interesting and high profile directors currently working in that field. Uh, and he's done quite a lot of interesting films um, so I think that's a way of introducing his name. Um, and secondly, I think it's quite emblematic of a certain strand of, of Jishuega filmmaking, which is the sort of documentary on yourself and your family and, and your identity. Um, and thirdly, I think it introduces a theme about racial tensions or racial difference and ethnicity in Japan that people probably over here just don't, haven't really thought about at all. And I guess fourthly as well, I just think it's quite a fun film. It's not too long and it's very bouncy and it's, uh, it, people come out with something with it. And it's not a film that they get a chance to see outside of an event like this either. So I'm, I'm sort of glad it went down pretty well there, I think. <laughs>